Hi, my name is Gisela Marti, and I am the creative director for Tammy Taylor Nails. Today, I'm going to share with you a design that has been inspired by the harvest season. I have called it Harvest. The guest artist, of course, is going to be the new collection from Tammy Taylor. Let's the holiday begin. So, let's get started. For this harvest design, the products that we will be using would be from the Prisma collection, apple cider, autumn leaf, gingerbread, leather boots, regular Prisma, gold, dust, purple, magenta, lime green. You will also need a small crystal dap and dish. Uh, from tools, we will be working with a medium flat brush, the three-dimensional brush, the detail brush, and the dotting tool. From the covered it up powders, you will need the medium dark pink, and from the competitive edge, the clear powder. You'll need your Prisma Dap and Dish, your brush cleaner, your liquid, your clean it. To seal the design, you will need your Top Gel Plus, the oil for the end, and of course, last but not least, we will need the wipe pits and the towelettes. So today we're gonna be working with an edge nail. That's what we're gonna do, an edge nail. And each nail needs a different composition on the form. The first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to take my form and I'm going to fold it to create a deep crease. Once I do that, I'm going to take my scissor and I'm going to cut the center just to make a perfect V. With this nail, in order for me to have both sides completely even, I need to follow the line. And when I follow the line, whether it's this line or that one, depending how big or how small the nail it is, it will give me exactly the same thing in both sides. So let's just place the form now on the nail. Okay, so I already placed my form, and if you notice, um, I prepared the almond for my nail, and I did it on a chevron style. So I line up the point of my chevron with my form. So this is what is going to give me the effect of the edge nail. So I'm gonna start with my first color, which is the gingerbread. And I'm gonna grab a ball. I'm gonna place it. And I want to bring it all the way up. I'm going to follow the second line so I know on the other side what is going to be the width of the nail. Okay, once again, bring it to the corner and right on the center. I'm going to do the second side, the other side, with my apple cider. I'm going to place it exactly the same way that I did with my gingerbread, following the second line. And patting sideways. Patting sideways. To create the flat look of the edge nail, okay? Flat look of the edge nail, perfect. Now, I'm gonna take a ball of clear and I'm going to touch my gold dust to give that golden color to my clear and I'm going to finish the edge of the tip of my nail. You notice? I'm going from four 
slanted pat again see right there you have your slanted look and pat 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 fix it up and now we're going to the other side and we're going to do exactly the same thing a clear ball you're going to dip into the gold and you're going to place it Following the same number, number four, and then pat the side to make it flat. Again, number four. Be sure that everything is completely flat. Perfect. They both meet on the same point. Four and four. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to encapsulate with my clear, placing a big bow on the side, doing a back stroke, then bring it all the way down. Remember, you're gonna do one side and then the other side. Once again, another clear ball, put it on the side. Back stroke. and then bring it all the way down. If you need liquid to smooth it out, just use liquid, because it's very important that everything is very nice and smooth. Look the nail sideways, and if you need a little bit more, then you just place it right there, whatever you need it, so it would be easier for you when you're doing the filing. And that is my edge nail. Now, I'm gonna let it dry. And once it's dry, the way I'm going to be filing using my 180 C, that would be filing flat side, filing flat side, I'm not going to curve, I'm just gonna flat file and flat file each side. And of course, I'm going to be sure that the edge is completely marked. Okay, now what we are going to do, since we already uh, filed the nail completely and um, we did it sideways, like for example, again, let me review that. With the file, flatten so you can create the effect of the edge nail. So I'm going to paint, I'm gonna use the painting technique. So this is gonna be extremely wet. I'm gonna take my gingerbread and the same place where I put it, I'm going to paint down that nail. The other side, the same way, I'm gonna use the painting technique using my brush extremely wet and I'm gonna bring it down completely, down completely. Once again, I wanna check, recheck, and paint. I'm gonna wait a couple of seconds and meanwhile it's drying, <clears throat> what I do is I take my rubber stamp, because this is exactly what I'm gonna be using, a rubber stamp, and I'm going to emboss the surface of the nail with my rubber stamp. You can use any rubber stamp, especially if it's a flexible rubber stamp, and you can create awesome effects. So right now, as I see that my nail is getting a little bit dry, I'm gonna take any side of my rubber stamp and I'm going to stamp. This is called embossing. 
very simple. Just touch and you can create different effects. Wait a little bit longer, just a little bit, and back again to emboss and create those awesome effects. You can also use your dotting tool to create little smaller effects. And that's exactly what I am doing creating some small details on my emboss. There we go. Now we're gonna wait till it dries. And once it's dry, then we can go ahead and place our three-dimensional. All right, so the surface of my nail is completely dry. Now I'm gonna do my three-dimensional. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do some grapes. So I'm gonna take my brush in a very straight position and I'm going to touch the liquid and I'm going to take the excess of the liquid totally out and on the same position I'm going to come to my purple and I'm going to touch, I'm going to dip into my magenta and that's my first grape. I'm going to place it. The same way I'm going to take many, I can take some a little bit bigger some a little bit smaller and I'm going to keep placing it side by side. Sometimes I'm going to take my grapes and I'm going to invert it so I can have different effects. Again, dip into the magenta, place it. When you clean your brush, don't forget that you always have to twirl the brush. Back again, take all the excess of the liquid out, dip, and place. See, I, I already have a lot of purple in here. I need to break that pattern, and the way I'm gonna do it is by taking the purple and invert it. Put it the opposite, the opposite side so you can have the magenta on top of the purple instead of the purple um, in top of the magenta. Again, see how beautiful? Start looking. Place another grape right there. Always with the brush straight. I'm going to put one over here, invert it. Now I'm going to put a purple over here to break the pattern. And keep placing small grapes. Remember, the vines of grapes, they are not completely even. So you're going to start putting less grapes as you go down. I'm going to invert it, this one. Gray comes in different colors. I'm doing it in these two uh, shades, but you can do it in green because they're also green and they're also red. So choose whichever is the color that you want for your grapes. Place another one over here. And Look at the composition of what you're doing so you know where to put in what color to put. Keep working down. Gonna put another one over here. And a few more, I'm gonna add a few more. One here. One over here. This is looking delicious, huh? And very artistic, very easy, very simple to do. Right there. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put one here and here and I'm gonna finish 
with my grapes. Notice as I'm dipping into the powder how all the dots are very similar. It means that the only thing that I'm doing is just touching the surface and the liquid that the brush has is more than enough to bring out the little grapes because these are very tiny, tiny balls. I think that this looks perfect. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to add over here the top of my vine and I'm gonna do it with my dark color, which is leather boots. And I'm gonna place it right there. I'm gonna let it flow and I'm gonna take the excess of the liquid out by twirling my brush. And I want to square So, there we go. It looks great. As it dries, if you have to reshape, reshape, okay? Perfect. Now I'm gonna do some leaves. And I'm going to do the leaf in combination using my green and my gold. In the same way, I'm going to grab my light color And I'm going to dip into my green and I'm going to place it. Once you place it, let it flow. And then you're going to mark. To mark, be sure that you use the brush on the side position. Look, I'm flattening and then I'm going to Mark one side by opening it. Mark the other side by opening it. And keep doing exactly the same thing as you have the shape of your leaf. If you have to remark, go back again, get the point, and remark. 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 I already have one leaf. Now I'm going to do another one by using my lime green and dipping into my darker green and I'm gonna place it right there because you know what, leaf has different colors and this is harvest, okay? If it doesn't go because you don't have enough liquid, then you have to let that ball go and then you have to go for another one. Means that it was too dry. Here we go. Dip and place. See how perfect it is now? Before it was too dry. With my brush sideways, I'm going to drag it down. And once I do that, then I come with my brush and I open, open, Keep opening until you do your leaf. If you have to remark, go back and remark with the side flat up. Remark and remark. I'm gonna put one more leaf and I'm gonna put it this side. And this leaf is going to be with my lime green dip into my leather boots and I'm gonna place it right there. Let it flow and open it with a brush sideways and then open to mark, open to mark and if it's too short and you want to add a little bit more, you can still do the adding by taking on a small size ball, dip it into the color and place it just at the end. And what is going to happen right here is that I'm going to have a different, see how when I mark, 
How does it take a different shape, my leaf? Again, I'm going to remark. And bring it exactly where all the colors meet. And that's my leaf. So I have one, two, three leaf and my grapes. Now I'm going to wait till it dries and I'm going to put some details with my paint using my detail brush. Okay, now I'm gonna do my small details and I'm gonna use my detail brush with black paint and I'm gonna do some strings with my detail brush which is awesome to do these tiny details. I'm gonna do it up there. I'm gonna bring one over here doing exactly the same thing by twirling the brush small twigs. I'm going to do one more over here in my detail brush. It's going to be able to wrap everything right there. Back again, this side, I'm going to do another one. See? And bring it down and twirl. You don't have to put many, just a few, just to bring those details of the twigs. There we go. Now, I'm going to clean and I'm going to use now some details with my white. And my white, what it's going to be, is going to be outlining some details of my leaf. Like, for example, I come over here and I just outline my leaf just to bring it out. Bring it out. My other leaf, the same thing, I'm going to outline it. And my last one. Over here, I'm going to do exactly the same thing. Just going to slightly, some areas, just to bring out the shape of my leaf. That's it. On the twigs, I'm going to do exactly the same thing. Bring a few tiny details. Just to bring out that color black that I put. When you put black and white together, what happened it is, it just brings it out, both colors. It looks elegant and beautiful. Now, I'm gonna take my silver and using my dotting tool, I'm gonna put some tiny dots. Dots always make a huge difference. Look how beautiful and elegant. Same thing over here, I'm going to put a couple of dots and I'm going to make it small, tiny, small, coming down. And that silver is just going to bring out the design. Look how gorgeous and elegant this design look. Put in one more here. and right here and this is it i already finished my design once my colors are completely dry i'm gonna seal the nail with my top gel plus and cure under the lamp for two minutes now that my my paint is completely dry i'm going to seal around the three-dimensional And I'm going to cure on the lamp for two minutes. So all the way around the three-dimensional. I'm going to leave the area that I emboss without top gel because I want the surface to show rough. Because that's what makes the emboss look beautiful. 
only where my little designs are, that's exactly what I'm going to put. And of course, at the end of the nail, to bring the translucency of the effect out. This is it. Now I'm gonna cure for two minutes under UV light. Great, the whole nail is completely dry. So now all what I have to do is just take my wipe it with my clean it and clean the whole surface of the nail. And there, here is my finished nail. Let's recap. We created the itch nail using the apple cider and the gingerbread with the gold dust at the tip. We created the grape using the magenta and the purple by using the dipping technique. The leaf was done with a combination of the lime green and the dark green. And some of the leaf was done with the dark green and the gold dust. And um, the little details was done with black, white, and silver details. Wow, that was really fun. It was beautiful and it was elegant. I am sure that if you share this design with your client, they're gonna love it. So, till next time, have fun.